Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome to episode 33 of the Alec Walt Show. I'm your host, Alec Walt, alongside another very special guest. And today, we're going to talk about the Miami Heat. The Heat have been spent millions of dollars this offseason. And joining me to talk all about them and more is Kyle Russo, the co-host of Buckets on JDF Sports and Review and Preview Sports. Kyle, welcome back to the show, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Alec. Anytime. Thank you for having me again. So let's start with the big addition here for the Miami Heat. They gave a three-year, $90 million contract to point guard Kyle Lowry. What was your reaction when you found out Lowry was heading to Miami? I was really happy. You know, the last couple seasons, the Miami Heat have been a team that's been in the ring for Kyle Lowry. It's been them and really the Philadelphia 76ers. But noting that you are in on an NBA champion up, on an NBA champion in Kyle Lowry, a guy that's a well-established point guard in this league. And yes, he is an older player, but has a lot of good veteran experience and had a really good season last season as well in a down year for Toronto as they had a whole cluster. They didn't even play in Toronto. They wanted up playing in Tampa all last season. It got me really excited, Alec, because when you look at this Heat team, especially the last couple of years, I'm a big fan of Goran Dragic, but he was a better point guard off the bench rather than in the starting lineup. And you saw last season, especially the Heat, were missing that tremendously. In fact, in last year's draft, I wanted them to take a point guard in the first round at that 20th overall spot. They wanted up going with Precious Achua. And you saw throughout the season, they had many problems. Jimmy Butler was the guy that was mainly, was the ball handle, was the floor facilitator. Now, you give this team a true point guard, starting experience, championship pedigree. What can they be? That's really exciting for me as a Heat fan. So how does Lowry complement Butler and Adebayo offensively? He spreads the floor. He spreads the floor tremendously, something the Heat haven't had because, like, like I've said, Jimmy Butler has been, the guy, has been the primary ball handler. And so it's ultimately taken him out of loop for any offensive production uh, or limited him, hindered him for any offensive production that he can have and really just solely focus on Bam Adebayo and what he can do as a front court type of player, a guy that's with inside the post, has a mid-range game, but really just limits a ban. Now you have Kyle Lowry who would get his own shot, shot around 40% from the three-point line this year, and something that's going to help the Heat out tremendously again this year is that the Heat were a very, very poor team this year, free throw shooting. Kyle Lowry shot the free throw 87%, made 87% of the free throws that he took this year, which is tremendous, and shot around 44% from the field, uh, around 17 points per game five rebounds per game, and seven assists per game. So this is an all-around type of player that the Heat are getting at the starting point guard position. And I think he opens up so much more for the Heat as a a true point guard that they've been missing for such a long time. Yeah, it's going to help a lot of guys like Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, who knocked down three-point shots. Jimmy Butler, like you mentioned, has some of that offensive pressure off him. I think this addition of Kyle Lowry is absolutely perfect for your Miami Heat team. I mean, you look at this rotation, it looks like one of the better in the NBA for next season. Let's talk about your backup point guard, because Victor Oladipo was a guy you added at the trade deadline, and then uh, due to injury, didn't really play that much for the Miami Heat. I mean, if this guy could stay healthy for a full season, I, I know that's, you know, not hasn't happened the last couple of years, but that is a hell of a dynamic point guard coming off the bench. Yep. I, you have to love the the addition or the re-signing of Victor Oladipo, and, and I knew it was going to happen because the Heat were going to be able to have money because of kind of hard to explain. I'm trying to remember how it was explained to me is that they have the money to do so because of the fact that he was injured this season and were able to sign him based on that. And, and like you said, Alec, it is a tremendous re-signing if he's able to stay healthy. That's the key. But why I think this is even so much more of a tremendous signing is because of what the Heat did this free agency. The amount, the plethora of weapons in which they've added to the team, whether it was re-signing a Duncan, adding a Kyle Lowry, which we talked about, defensive presence of both a Markeith Morris and a P.J. Tucker, it takes the pressure off of Victor Oladipo and allows him to slowly adjust back into this Heat lineup where he doesn't have to be, essentially, maybe he won't be a starter in the starting five, Alec. Maybe he'll be a guy that comes off the bench with the Tyler Hero that allows for a nice offensive game in the secondary, whereas last season the Heat didn't have that. Tyler Hero had a down year, and that immediately eliminated the bench. They had no presence off the bench. Most games, their starting five was carrying them. Now, having a Victor Oladipo off the bench, who's a two-time All-Star, who went healthy is a great player, who just last season, before he got hurt with the Heat, was going to be re-upping for a major, major contract. And now this guy, the Heat, 
are able to sign him on a one-year deal. I believe it's a, a, a minimum contract for absolutely nothing, no pressure whatsoever on him. I don't think he's going to be able to start the season. I think he's going to come back sometime in December, January. But if he's healthy around that playoff time, this is a tremendous weapon to be re-added to this Heat squad. Yeah, think about it. your backcourt right now. Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson off the bench, Victor Oladipo, Tyler Hero. I think the Heat have done a phenomenal job. Now, they spent, did spend some money in this backcourt, giving Duncan Robinson $90 million. Do you think that deal is worth it for the Heat? It's tough. It's tough. As a Heat fan, you you love to see it. It's built around the entirety of their system, Alec, how, how they've been one of the best organizations in basketball in terms of development. And this is a guy in Duncan Robinson came from Michigan, had a whole backstory where he didn't even start off in Michigan, started as a D3 player, went up to D1 in Michigan, undrafted, and now he's the signed the biggest contract ever for an undrafted player. So you love the story, five years, $90 million. You got to applaud the guy because it's it's deserved. It is deserved. He finished fourth this year in three-pointers made only behind Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, and Buddy Heald. With around 255, I want to say, he shot 40% from the three-point line this year, which was a down year. But if you remember last year, he was one of the best, most lights-out shooter in the entire NBA. And he's a specialist. This is his game. This is what he does. He's a three-point shooter solely. And I think the addition of that true point guard, which we talk about Kyle Lowry, and like you said earlier, not only spreads the floor for players like Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler and allows them to flourish offensively, but Duncan is willing to create open look shots for him because he is a knockdown shooter. And when he's hot, he's one of the most lethal three-point shooters in the entire NBA. The problem that, not that I see, but something that I saw a lot this season, which, you know, not that I don't want to wipe away this season, but the Heat went through a lot this season. They had a lot of injuries. They were the fourth. Uh, most uh, ridden team by COVID-19, uh, only behind Boston Celtics and two other teams with 95 total games missed uh, combined for any Miami Heat player this season due to COVID-19. So you have to you have to realize that there was some stuff that went on and, and hopefully you get a better season next season. You understand the injury and now that COVID-19 is a part of the world that it's going to be a part of the game. But at the same time, you look at how he played last season. Yes, he had his nights where he shot six for 11. He had his nights where he made five, six, seven three-pointers in a game. But he also had a lot of two for 10 nights. He also had a lot of those nights. And even in the NBA Finals last year when they played the Lakers, he really wasn't a, a strong presence. If he's not hitting his shot, you saw that Eric Spolstra was taking him out of the lineup. And he was only playing 20 minutes in a game. Now, is that a guy that you can necessarily count on for $18 million booked in a year for the next five years. And I think that while it's well-deserved, there's also that other outlook where it's like, we're going to get a lot of great nights, but we also may get a lot of bad nights that might lose us some games. But I think with what they've added, it might lessen the blow of some bad nights that Duncan Robinson may have and might flourish in the fact that there are a lot of good nights ahead for him shooting-wise as well. So one thing you guys always have, and I compliment the Heat a lot for this, is you always have great defensive versatility on the wing. P.J. Tucker is one of the most physical. Play, play, has tons of playoff experience. Just won an NBA championship. Can you please explain to me how the Miami Heat got away with only giving him $15 million over two years total? I, I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you. Just coming off an NBA championship, and again, while he may not have these stats uh, point-wise in the point column, you know, people jump right away. They look at what he did in the finals, specifically against Milwaukee. They look at the playoffs in general and say, well, this guy didn't average double-digit points per game. How can he possibly be worth any sort of money? This is the money in which he deserves. No, he's an unbelievable no defender in a Miami Heat system that is uh, dominant and, and very prestigious on the fact of, holding themselves as they like to quote themselves as the dog mentality. And that's what PJ Tucker is defensively. And while people talk about the lack of offense that he brings for people that don't know PJ Tucker specifically or the game of basketball that well are uninformed on the fact that besides this season, Alec, he has led the league the last three years in a row in terms of best three point percentage, 42% from the three point line when he's shooting in the corner, one of the best in the league. So if you're getting open look shots to P.J. Tucker in the corner and you're getting the defensive mentality that he has, what he brings to the table, this is not a guy you're counting on 15 points per night, 10 points per night. 
But his defense, his grit, his toughness, his getting physical with you, and the ability when he has those open look corner shots can make them, this is a great contract for the Heat and an absolute steal. In fact, to be quite honest with you, I can't believe that Milwaukee let him go. Knowing what, he, knowing what he did for them in their championship run. Yes, Giannis was carrying them offensively. Same thing with Middleton and Holiday. But what he brought grit-wise to the table defensively and how he helped against the Brooklyn team, what he did against the Phoenix team, I can't believe that they let him go, especially for what the Heat gave him, two years, $15 million. You're talking about $7.5 million for a guy that essentially helped you win a championship. Yeah, I mean, I I think you're spot on there. I think they're replacing him with, I think they signed Semi Ojale. I mean, they're going to really miss him a ton there on the wing. Also there in the front court, you signed Markeith Morris, Dwayne Dedman. You guys have a pretty solid rotation right now forming in Miami. So let's talk about it. What are your expectations for this team this year after getting swept last year by the Milwaukee Bucks? I expect them to be in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, that, that's what I expect of them. Okay. That's that's what I expect. There there should be nothing falling short of what they've done. They have an all around basketball team now, uh, and I think the point guard really solidifies that. They are not only deep; they not only have shooters. Yes, I, I think the only the biggest question mark with this team now is that when you look at the rest of the Eastern Conference, the big men are very versatile, very physical, and while Bam Adebayo doesn't let other players push him around I could see where the height advantage may hinder the team specifically against the Joel Embiid maybe against the Giannis now you got Andre Drummond with the 76ers now you got Nikola Vucevic with the Bulls it may hinder them in some aspects but other than that I don't really see too many flaws with this team and you add all those factors on top of the fact that now they're a deep squad Alex like you talk uh, Alex like you talked about a nine-man rotation and I, again, I don't think they're done yet either. I, I, there's a lot of floating names around there that the Heat could potentially add to this squad. They've signed two of their G League uh, guys back and Max Struss, who just, I don't know if you saw it in the, in the G League games last night against the Warriors, was absolutely tremendous. Made uh, Had 27 points last night, knocked down a lot of his three-point shots. Another versatile player, Gabe Vincent as well, at the point guard position. So now you add depth on top of what everything we just added. I could see them easily matching up against the Brooklyn Nets squad in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's my prediction. And and I think that is where they want to be as well, because I think that's where they see themselves as well. So if you have them beating or playing the Nets, say you guys play the Bucs again in a series, you guys certainly right now are much better matched up to play the Bucs, especially if they don't have Tucker and he's on your side. Yeah, that that's that's what I'm thinking as well, is that, now, what we had before, you had a stopgap of Bam Adebayo against uh, Giannis. Now you have potentially a, a, a three-way stopgap of, of Jimmy Butler with Bam Adebayo and P.J. Tucker essentially building a wall for Giannis and the Tacupo. And while we've seen in these playoffs, and again, nothing to take away from the Bucs, because that's what people assume when you talk like this, where you, where you don't rank them for next year in the category of Eastern Conference Finals or reaching the finals, is that it's throwing shade. It's not throwing shade. It's just essentially what you saw unfold. A lot of these games in the finals, Alec, a lot of these games in the Eastern Conference finals, and the entirety of the playoffs, Giannis was the constant. You know what you're getting from him, and he's an absolutely tremendous player. You could potentially book him in as a top 10 power forward in the league all time right now, and he hasn't even touched the prime of his career. But with Drew Holiday, you're not – you you saw you weren't getting – the offensive numbers that maybe you were hoping for in, in a $120, $140 million man. You're not getting 15 plus, 20 plus points a night. You're getting a lot of rebounds. You're getting a lot of grit. You're getting tremendous defensive play. You're allowing a lot to spread the floor as well. Chris Middleton, same thing. While he had his absolutely stupendous nights, he had a lot of bad nights that cost the Bucks some games in these playoffs and in these finals as well. And while you take away the depth of the Bucks, because that's essentially what is happening. Pieces are falling off. Bryn Forbes signs with the Spurs, helped them out in the playoffs. P.J. Tucker signs with the Miami Heat. And you see them trying to bring in pieces. And some of the pieces that they brought back are definitely going to help them. Bobby Portis is key. In fact, I read a report that the Miami Heat were actually one of the teams that offered Bobby Portis more money to originally sign with them, but he chose to re-sign with uh, Milwaukee 
said he found himself a home and you got to respect the guy for wanting to go chase another ring. But at the same time, it's so hard to run it back. And when you look at a team that's being picked and prodded for, for pieces of that championship squad, you saw what they went through in the playoffs. And on top of the fact, and when I say this, I know I'm going to be a uh, judge for saying so, but this is the reality of the case scenario. The amount of injuries that took place in these NBA playoffs and in these NBA finals, just based on stardom, forget about, you know, you have your sixth man, your seventh man, you have some key rotational players. The amount of stars that were lost on both the eastern side and the western side in both conferences, respectively, was bigger than anything I think I've ever seen in my entire life watching basketball. And, and not to take anything away from the fact of what the Bucks were able to accomplish or what the Suns were able to accomplish, but if they face a healthy Lakers team, Either the Suns or the Bucks. Do they either do they make it to the finals in the Suns? Do the do the Bucks beat the Lakers? If Denver has a healthy Jamal Murray, is Denver the team that's being represented in the Western Conference Finals? You got to take all these things into uh, factor. You look at the East. Joel Embiid, while he played tremendously, we all saw his injury. We didn't even think he was going to be playing against Atlanta, but the reality of the fact is that he was. We saw the injuries to James Harden and Kyrie Irving, and yet it still took a game seven in an overtime for the Bucs <laughs> to beat this team. You got to take those things all into account and say to yourself, while yes, they may be deemed as maybe, maybe injury prone at this point in time, or you got to worry about injuries. Those are a part of the game. I understand that. But at the same time, if you're booking these guys to be healthy, is that a team that you really want to bet yourself against? I don't know if you can. I really don't think you can. The way I look at it with the Heat right now, you mentioned injuries. If you guys don't get injured, specifically with Oladipo on the bench, I completely agree with you. I think this team is, one, extremely difficult to beat in a playoff series. Two, you guys have the versatility defensively to defend some of the best wing players in the league. Like I said before, Lowry Oladipo, Robinson Harrow, Butler, Tucker Morris, Deadman Adebayo, or Adebayo Deadman. Even if you guys deal with injuries, you guys can make up for it right now. Yeah. That's how deep you guys are. Yeah. So I give your team a lot of credit. My final question for you, man. We mentioned this nine-man rotation. There still is some room you guys can make to improve the roster. What are the needs for this current team, and what's a, another move you could possibly see this team make before the start of the regular season? I, I think we could definitely use a more versatile uh, backup big man. Um, I think that's something that came into question a lot last season is that after Bam out of bio, there, there was really nothing essentially there. Uh, Dwayne Dedman was an ad, uh, an addition during the trade deadline, who we signed as a, a free agent and brought in, played some solid minutes for the Heat off the bench. But I think that we need, uh, that the Heat needs somebody more versatile. And uh, again, going back to the G League, going back to their development uh, storyline and what we're talking about here. The Heat have played two games in the G League right now. They have a seven-footer named Omer Yurtsevin. He is Killing it in the summer league. Unbelievable. I think he had 28 and 15 in the first game and like 25 and 8 in, in the game last night against the Warriors. That is a person that I expect to potentially make this roster and be a solid, maybe even compete for that second backup spot at the center position with Dwayne Dedman. I think that they're solid at the guard position. I think they could add they could add some veteran experience. What I'm hearing from a lot of people, a lot of knocks, is that, again, while this Heat team is, is, is very established and very deep, they are on the older side. I, I would say at this point in time that the age factor is definitely there with this team now. So maybe add some, uh, some younger players as well because of the fact that they weren't able to add anything in the draft. Uh, all their signings were through undrafted free agency. They didn't have any picks this year. So maybe adding some younger players just to the mix, even though I don't think they'll get much playing time with this deep rotation that they've already created. But that's really about it. I, I would say probably big man is probably a third or second big man would probably be the, the, the biggest need at this point in time. But otherwise, anything else, I think they're set. So Kyle, for those of you list, for those listening that want to keep in touch with you on social, listen to some of your podcasts, uh, tell them where they can go. Yeah, so if you want to follow me uh, on any of my social medias, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram at Kyle Russo 612, uh, at Kyle Russo on Facebook. I don't really use Twitter, not really that much of a fan. But like Alec introduced earlier in the show, I am a co-host of Buckets on JDF Sports, premiering every single Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We're taking a little break right now because the season has, as you guys know, ended. Uh, we did a little draft show last week. 
I'm also on Review and Preview every Tuesday night starting at 7 o'clock. Uh, we're also taking a little break right now. We'll be <laughs> planning on re-upping back in sometime in August, I believe middle of August, end of August. But that's where you guys can find me if you like what I've been saying, like what I've been talking, and uh, look forward to hearing from a lot of you guys. So thank you, Alec, for having me again. Really appreciate it, man. Had a great time. Yeah, no problem, man. I really appreciate you joining me, everyone tuning in. Follow Kyle on social media. Listen to his shows, man. This kid knows what he's talking about. That's why I've had him on now three times here on Down the Block Sports. That's me for this edition of the Alec Walt Show. I'm Alec Walt alongside Kyle Russo. What do you think of the Miami Heat during the 2021-2022 regular season? Feel free to comment that below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Down the Block Sports for more of my exclusive content. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll see you very soon.